In this tutorial, I'm going to show you a cool little reveal trick that I'm going to do on one of our samples. I'm going to start with this vehicle lighting sample as the base for it. Now the file's opened, I'm going to go to the lighting tunnel file. I think there's a few things I want to do to update this. I'm going to get rid of the rear camera. I'm just going to change the zoom factor slightly. So I want these lights to light the car up a bit more. The front and around the sides here. Get rid of this continuous modifier and I'm going to bring the lighting up around the car. I also don't want the car to rotate, so I'm going to get rid of the continuous modifier. I also don't want this cylinder on the floor, so I'm going to delete that. I also want to rotate the car to a slightly different angle. Now the car's not lit as well as I want at the moment, so I'm going to add some area lights. And once I've got the area lights in, I'll turn off visible surfaces. There's two objects I'm going to play with here. First object is the 3D plane. I want to make a big sheet, so this 3D plane, it's square. I'd like the corners to be uh, curved slightly, have a bit of a bevel to them. 3D plane doesn't do that. There's no bevel for the corners. But what I can do is if I go to 2D primitive, bring that in. It's exactly the same shape as the 3D plane. But what is different on the 2D primitive is it does have bevel radius. So when I'm adding my big cloth sheet, it's got nice rounded corners rather than square corners. So I'm going to delete the primitive plane. And I'm going to use this 2D primitive box as my primitive for my cloth. I'm going to add material to it. And I want to make this material double sided. So that I can see it when I'm underneath it. So if I go to geometry, go to double sided. Now you can see it both sides. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so it fits over the car better. So I'm going to change size X and size Y scaling. Size X, I'm going to take up to about three and a bit. And size Y, I'll make that a bit longer because it's longer than the car. And I'm going to push it back a little bit so it falls over the back of the car more than the front. Let me add a cloth deformer to this. So as soon as I press play, the cloth will fall. And the reason it's falling is because it's got gravity on it and it's going to fall down until it hits something. Now we need to make something we want to hit and we want the cloth to deform over. The issue we've got here is this car model is quite high poly. If we have the cloth fall down onto that car, it's going to run really slowly because if you're using the high poly mesh as a collision mesh, it really reduces the performance of the scene. I want to take the car and make a lower poly version of it. So I'm going to make a copy of the mesh using duplicate geometry. So now I want to change the number of polys in this. I'm going to use retopologize. I'm just going to quickly hide this geometry for now. So if I go into the McLaren and I go to visibility to zero. So that will keep the McLaren car hidden and it will keep the duplicate geometry visible. If I hit shift and R, you can see the polygons. It's a bit too low poly. I can show you what will happen if the cloth falls on it. So what you do is you take the output out of your geometry and you stick it into the bottom of the cloth deformer collision node pin. If I press play now, you can see the cloth deformer still falls through it. Now the reason the cloth deformer is falling through it still, if I press home, is because of the number of polygons. Now you can see there's hardly any polygons on this. So I'm going to up the subdivisions. As subdivisions Y, I'm going to make at least twice the amount of subdivisions X because it's longer. If I put those on about 48, I'll just up this to about 24, something like that, so they're similar size. You can also see the subdivisions on the cloth corner. There you go, so that looks very similar polygon sizes. So if I press play now, the cloth deforms over the car perfectly near enough. So I'll press home again. So I'll go back to this mesh. Um, I'm going to up the resolution of the lower poly mesh to about two. Now you can see when I change the polygons, it's just really cutting into all the original mesh to reduce the polygons. I can inflate this slightly. And if I inflate it, you can see that the inflation actually gets a better looking mesh. I've got to find a sweet spot between inflating it and the actual final geometry. I 
think that result's quite nice. But you'll see, because it's inflated, it's going to be quite big compared to the original mesh. So I'll go back to the original geometry of the car, make that visible. I'm going to turn off wireframe, which is Shift R. And then I'm going to physically scale down the duplicate geometry, hold down control, and then I can just scale it down all at once. So you can see that it's scaling quite nicely, but it is starting to cut into the mesh. And I think I need to just scale it on X and Y axes. I think they need to be pretty much the same on the edge. The back doesn't matter too much. The front is what I care about mostly. So I've re-topologized the geometry to make a lower poly mesh. And that seems to be about the right size. It doesn't have to be perfect. Another thing I should do with all geometry, they have physics attributes. If you go down to the physics tab in the properties, open this up and you can see that there is a collision scale radius and that's about 20 centimeters, something like that. So I'm going to lower that down to about a centimeter, which is 0 0.001. So that means when the cloth hits it, it's pretty close to the mesh. So let's hide the collision mesh. So now when I press play, it looks like it's falling on the car. The other thing you might notice is the cloth is actually falling through the floor as well. So I can select the floor plane. That can also be piped into the cloth deformer. Press home and play, and there you go. It's bouncing off the floor as well. And you can see that the cloth is riding above the height of the floor plane. So if I select the floor plane and go down to the physics properties, and that has also got a collision radius of 0.02, which should be 0.01. Press home, press play again. There you go, it's a lot closer. I want to move the cloth back a bit because it's still falling over the front of the car and I want it to fall over the back more. So I'll select the 2D primitive box. Best thing to do is turn off the cloth deformer so you can see what you're doing. Select the box and I'm going to move that back quite a bit. I'll do turn on the cloth deformer and press play. And there you go. So this is going to be the start of the animation. So the cloth should start on the car and then get dragged away. But I still want to look at what's going on with the actual physics sim of the cloth. You can see that the cloth is bouncing quite a lot when it hits the floor. Um, obviously this is a bit unrealistic. It makes the sheet look a bit like rubber. So what you need to do is you select the floor plane and the duplicate geometry. You go down to the physics properties and we can see there's a bounciness property. If we lower that down to zero, it should get rid of all that bounce. Press home and play. You can see all the bounce has gone. So the cloth slides when it hits the floor. So I'm going to add a little bit more friction there just so it doesn't slide too much on the floor. And that's going to be added to both the car and the floor plane. So I press home and play. There you go, it's sticking a bit better. Probably a little bit too much. I just don't want it to slide too much. I want to keep the edges out a little bit so we get some nice creases going on where it folds up over the car. So let's have a look at how we can get the geometry of this cloth looking a bit nicer. One of the first things we can do is add a tessellate deformer to the primitive box. Hit Shift R and you can see that the mesh is a lot more high poly. Tessellate deformer is adding a load more polys and it's falling a little bit nicer now. Let's have a look at the actual cloth deformer itself and we can go through some of these settings. So one of the first things I want to do is I want to update the update FPS and this will just give it more calculations as it falls and it will give it a bit more of a realistic cloth shape. I'm not going to touch the gravity. I'm not going to touch any of the update steps and I'm not going to touch the damping. I'm going to keep it stiff and flexible. I'm going to add some more stiffness to it. And this will make the cloth slightly stiffer when it hits the car. Gives it a nicer look overall. And I'm going to update the shear stiffness, something like four. I want to add a bit more spring damping to it. It's looking quite nice, actually, this. Yes, actually, one of the first things I should have done is turned off self-collisions. If I turn that off, the frame rate will be a lot, lot higher. At the moment, the self-collisions meant that the cloth would actually collide with itself. 
if I press home and play, nothing's changed, but the frame rate will have gone up. So let's go back to the tessellate. I think I need some more polys in there. So I'm going to take tessellation up to two. Press home and press play. That's looking a lot more realistic. I'm happy with that. One thing I can do is I can add some more polys, but I don't want to add them before the cloth deformer because they're going to be calculated into the physics. So what I can do is add a subdivide, but I stick it on after the cloth deformer so it's not part of the physics calculations. If I hold Shift and R, you can see the subdivide will add a load more polys again. So then I press Home and press Play, and there you go. The next thing I want to do to this is make the cloth get pulled off the car for a nice showroom cloth reveal of the car underneath. To do this, I need a plane deformer. So I'll bring the plane deformer in. And I want it to happen before the cloth deformer. So this plane deformer is going to drive the X and Z coordinates. It will drag the cloth down and it will drag the cloth off the top of the car. But to drive this, I need a weight map. I'm going to get a generate weight map. Bring that in and that also goes above the plane deformer. So I'll connect that up and I want to show you the weight map. So the weight map is affecting the whole of the cloth at the moment. I want to press home so I can see what it's doing to the basic cloth. So I want to invert the cloth um, and I want to just have it affect this bottom edge so we can drag the cloth off the back of the car. I'm going to go to the generate weight map, invert it, and then I want to go to the fall off and I'm going to shrink this down. So if I have a sphere fall off, I want to make that a little bit harsh cut off on the fall off. I'm going to make this quite big still so that I just pull the edge of this cloth. Now this generate weight map is going to be plugged into the plane deformer and I'm going to also plug it into the cloth deformer. So that's attached to the plane deformer. So when you move the plane deformer, it'll affect the cloth. So I'll just turn the cloth off and I'll show you what it's doing. So I go to the plane deformer. If I move these positions, you can see that it moves back and forward here. I also want to pull it down to the floor when it drops using the Z position. And I'm going to do this using the timeline. So I'll turn the cloth back on. And I want to show both the plane deformer and the cloth deformer in the timeline. So I'll select those, go to the timeline. I'm going to pin these in. So I'm going to reset the timeline to zero, zero. Go on to the plane deformer. The first thing I want to do is I want to see how long it takes the cloth to hit the floor. So I'll turn off the plane deformer, go back to the node graph, and I'll just hide the generate weight back for now. And then I'll press play and see how long it takes the cloth to get to the floor. So that was about 1.2 seconds. So if I go back to my timeline, I go to my plane deformer, press home, I turn on the weight map, select um, position Z. I want it to start at naught. And by 1.2 seconds in, I want the cloth to hit the floor. I'll turn off the cloth deformer so I can see this. Move that to hit the floor. Turn on the cloth deformer, press home and see how this looks. The weight map is falling at pretty much the same speed as the cloth. If I go to my camera six, see if you can actually see that. That's hidden behind the car, that's perfect. The next thing I want to do is see how long it takes the cloth to settle and just stop flapping about. So I press play. So it stops moving around four seconds. So if I go back to four seconds, it's where the cloth stops moving. That's when I can start applying the movement. So I want it on zero here. If I open this up, you can see the, the Y position and the Z position. I want the movement to start here. And by about eight seconds, I want the cloth fully off the car. So at eight seconds, I want to move this. Turn off the cloth deformer. Get back to the plane deformer. Go to position Y. And I want that right out of the scene. So it's going to be right back over here. Turn on the cloth deformer, press home, see if this works. So it falls, drapes, and then reveals. Perfect. Press camera six, press home, see how it works. So you start with the cloth in the car. You get the reveal. 
excellent. That's working perfectly now. So the last thing to do is go back to the no graph and put a nice material on the cloth. The cloth's got a material already. I want to make the material a bit darker. I definitely want to make it a little bit rougher. So it looks like a satiny type thing. Add a little tiny bit of metallicness. And I also want to add some wrinkles. I've got some fabric wrinkles that I downloaded earlier. So I'll add that to the normal map. And those wrinkles I want to tile quite a bit because the material is quite long and thin. I'm going to tile them three on the X and five on the Y. And I also want to add a little bit of grungy noise on the roughness. And then I can have a play with the roughness until it looks right. So I'm going to drag the roughness up to about one. And I'm going to lower the normal map intensity a little bit. And I think that'll do. I think we're done now. Um, I could keep playing with this forever. I hope you liked the tutorial and looking forward to seeing you in the next Notch tutorial.